So guys, we are back for our championship score predictions. Let's jump in today's. Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. We've got quite a bit going on this weekend and quite a bit to catch up on. We've got all of the midweek matches which we're going to be digesting throughout today's video. We've got nine championship games coming up as well as two FA Cup ties coming up which do involve a championship side. few teams not in action, my team Preston being one of them, but after our 4-0 defeat against Luton in midweek. Quite happy we're not playing, to be honest. As always, if you do go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do get your score predictions down below. I'm interested to see which way you guys are going for some of these this weekend. But without any further ado, let's jump into these. So starting out, we've got a couple of early kickoffs going on in the Championship. We'll start out at Bramall Lane for Sheffield United up against Barnsley. This game being made really interesting by the way that Barnsley have recently picked up their form. It was another win for them in midweek. Puts them within touching distance now of Reading. Uh, a couple of set pieces goals in the first half managed to see off Bristol City and to keep a clean sheet in that match considering how leaky they were just a few months ago and um is a really big statement for them. Sheffield United don't tend to concede all too many goals at home, especially. It was a goalless draw for them in midweek against Blackpool. A little bit frustrating considering they had the ball in the back of the net and those celebrations, you know, they thought they had that winner. Ultimately, it was ruled out for an offside, which was a little bit controversial. I can see why it was ultimately given, though. Billy Shop stood in that offside position, you know, deemed to have um, been obstructing the goalkeeper's view, but a frustrating one for Sheffield United nonetheless, who would have loved nothing more than getting three points after how things unraveled against them um, against Coventry. So for this game, I don't think there'll be all too much in it. Um, so far this season under Paul Heckenbottom, Sheffield United have never gone more than two games without winning a match um, and they're currently winless in two. So if that trend was to continue, then Sheffield United should bounce back in this one. But Barnsley will make it tough. I don't think there'll be much in this one. One goal either way. I'm just going to back the blades for a 1-0 home win. Thief has gone 1-0 Sheffield United as well, but wouldn't be surprised if Barnsley sneak a point from that one. Next to them for Derby up against Coventry. Both sides losing in midweek. Coventry losing against Hull, where I think that the majority of people would have probably had Coventry as the favourites for that game. But two quite quick fire goals from Hull in the first half meant that Coventry had a bit of a mountain to climb in the second half. The game did open up a little bit more for Coventry in the second half, to be fair. I'm not sure how Ian Matson's attempt um, did end up going over the line in the end and had that gone in with sort of another 10 minutes to play maybe Coventry end up getting a point but it just wasn't to be and it looks like they'll be a bit too sort of inconsistent from now on to go ahead and make the top six. Next to them for Derby and I felt like midweek was a bit of a crushing result for them to be honest with you because it felt like there was a real opportunity there despite their away record for them to get something against an out of form Blackburn side. The first off everything was going their way as well taking the lead having chances to make it two but as soon as as Blackburn got that goal back all the momentum was with them and yeah that feels like quite a damning result there in Derby season we've already we, you know we've said uh, for quite some time now how they're going to need to improve that away record if they do want to survive their home record is still really strong though and with Coventry looking quite inconsistent I wouldn't put it past Derby winning this match to be honest with you I'm going to go 2-1 Derby in this one with FIFA going for a 1-1 draw Next up then, and to the Saturday 3 o'clock kickoffs, we've got Bristol City going up against West Brom. It finally feels like West Brom have found a little bit of form and a little bit of momentum in their season now. Even with the last two performances they had before the Fulham game, you know, the draw against Huddersfield and the win against Hull. They picked up results, but I still wouldn't say it was a great performance down to a T. But in midweek, I thought they were absolutely fantastic. They were all over Fulham um, from the off in that game. Callum Robinson, I think that's the best game he's had in quite some time. Deservedly so, he got his goal in the end. And 1-0 win over Fulham certainly isn't to be sniffed at. And to be honest, it probably could have been more than that in that game as well. So, finally feels like West Brom are starting to find their feet. And up against an incredibly inconsistent Bristol City side who have lost six of their last nine championship matches. Uh, disappointment in midweek to lose 2-0 against Barnsley. Two set-piece situations that they conceded from. Only Reading have conceded from more set-pieces than Bristol City have so far this season. So for a score prediction with momentum seeming to swing with West Brom, I'm going to go for a 2-1 baggies away winning this one with FIFA going for a 1-1 draw. Next then and to a game which I'm going to be keeping a really keen eye on. We've got Huddersfield going up against Bournemouth. Huddersfield's fantastic unbeaten run. 
finally coming to an end at the weekend to the hands of Millwall at the end. We said going into that one, it was going to be a tricky tie for them with the form that Millwall um, are currently on. But this is going to be a real test of character to see how they bounce back in this one. Up against the Bournemouth side, who themselves um, have been stuttering recently. It was more drop points for Bournemouth in midweek, a 1-1 against Reading. And it seemed to be a similar sort of game to Bournemouth's matchup against Preston. Some nice play from Bournemouth early on. You know, lovely link up between um, Jefferson Lerma and Dom Solanke for the opener. But I don't know what it is, whether it is a sense of complacency coming in or just the fact that Bournemouth like to be a little bit sort of methodical with how they play and they don't really go for the throat and kill and, and get that second and third goal to kill games off at the moment. But Reading sends their chance to get back into it and Tom Ince with a fantastic strike and um, ended up levelling things up in the end. The only benefit for Bournemouth in midweek was the fact that the majority of the rest of the chasing pack went ahead and lost in midweek. You know, Huddersfield included in that. So despite Bournemouth limping over the finish line, it still looks like they're on course for it at the moment. And um, sheerly due to it, it doesn't look like there's really all too much competition beneath them at the moment but this is going to be a fascinating game and I think that this will tell us a lot about both teams for the remainder of the season for a prediction I think I'm sitting on the fence for this one I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw that's a really tough game to call and um, I think first goal is quite important in that one FIFA's going to agree with me for a 1-1 very much up in the air that game. Next then to Hull up against Luton. It was both sides who won in midweek. Hull probably against the odds a little bit against Coventry. Two quick five goals in the first half. Managed to see them through that game. And Luton who absolutely dismantled North End in midweek. Putting four goals past us. That was just what Luton needed in terms of their top six hopes after how the weekend had gone for them. But we really struggled to contain their right hand side all throughout the afternoon. Um, don't get me wrong. Our, you know, Defending was absolutely a shambles for them this one and we had too many players that were just having an off day but Luton's intensity was there for a minute while impressed and just struggled to contain that really. Brian Cornick um, having some lovely link ups on that right hand side like I mentioned. Luke Berry with a brace as well and yeah just what Luton were in need of really after their game against QPR. Hull are a bit of a tough team to call at the moment but at home they have been a little bit inconsistent. They are without a win in their last four home matches having failed to score in each of them so I do think it is Luton that I'm back in this one and um, the promotion party is very much back on track after that battering in midweek so I'm going to go 2-0 Luton in this one with FIFA going for a 1-1 draw. Next then we go to Reading up against Blackburn this is such an interesting matchup and has so many sort of consequences on both the top and bottom of the championship it was two good results for these sides in midweek I thought Reading snatching a point against Bournemouth like I said growing into that game in the second half and in with a really nice finish to be fair to him up against the Blackburn side who finally found their goal scoring touch 1-0 down against Derby how many times you know recently have we seen um, Blackburn ultimately fall to a defeat in those circumstances but like we mentioned when we were talking about Derby before when they got that first goal it felt like the crowd got up a little bit more momentum was on their side uh, lovely assist for the Tyrese Dolan goal as well from Bradley Dack chipping in quite a well worked corner routine for that one but uh, yeah this has so many implications on both the top and bottom of the championship. Barnsley are now just two points behind Reading. So while you know midweek can be seen as a decent point, they certainly don't have any time to sort of reflect on that. And what's even more interesting is the fact that we've got an international break coming up after this weekend, and then after that we're straight into Barnsley up against Reading, which could be you know the relegation decider between these two if they're still within touching distance of each other. For this game. Oh, both have been so unreliable for results recently, but I think that I've got a little bit more faith in Blackburn maybe um, to provide me with a little bit more consistency than I do this Reading side at the moment. I'm going to go 2-1 Blackburn with Blackburn showing just a little bit more ruthlessness over midweek. FIFA's going 1-0 Blackburn. That's a huge game there. Next then for Stoke up against Millwall. Millwall I think have a decent record against Stoke um, over the past couple of years but this is an interesting one. Stoke at the moment are pretty much the definition of mid-table mediocrity. In all competitions it's now nine games without a win for them. They've fallen to 16th in the championship. Got themselves into a lead um, against Cardiff with quite a nice goal but once again playing themselves into trouble ultimately going on, going on to lose that game in quite a disappointing fashion and they're up against now the form team in the championship and I have to admit after their result in midweek this is probably the first time that I'm like properly taking Millwall seriously here and um, as a proper promotion candidate I know their form was fantastic coming into that Huddersfield game but that one was a real test of character and I think they came through it with flying colours not only the result but arguably 
their best performance of the season so far. Benikafobi with a brace, he could have easily had a hat-trick. They had other chances in that game as well to kill it off even sooner than they did. I think that Millwall are the obvious favourites coming into this one. Uh, just two points off the top six now, 10th in the table. The only problem that Millwall are going to have is just how many teams are vying for the top six at the moment. It's an absolute jumble around the top 10. But I'm going to go 2-0 Millwall in this game. Stoke just can't buy a win at the moment, can they? Thief is going 1-0 Millwall. After that, two Swansea up against Birmingham. And honestly, this could, game could go absolutely any way possible. Neither team has anything to play for. And these games um, could be a little bit wacky um, from now until the end of the season. I think we saw last weekend a few sort of nil-nils in these sort of games, which don't have all too much riding on them. But on the flip side of that, we could get an absolute goal fest. And it really depends on which team's fancying it a little bit more. Swansea obviously managed to get over the line in the end. Quite dramatic circumstances against Peterborough. In cruise control at half time, it seemed, but as Swansea liked to do, made it interesting for themselves, played themselves into trouble as Peterborough managed to turn that one around, but Oberfemi with a brace who we picked out as a player in midweek's video, and then Joel Perot with the winner. Birmingham this season, and the second half of it especially, has felt like a real slog for them. Um, it's just two wins now in their last 11 matches. Started out the game against Middlesbrough, you know, fairly brightly, but as soon as Borough got um, into their stride, took the lead, could have made it more than two as well. They missed that penalty. Then Etheridge did well to get down to. For a prediction in this one, I think with Swansea having a little bit more about them in terms of recent form, I'm going to go 2-1 Swansea, but nothing would surprise me in terms of an outcome for that game. FIFA's going 2-0 Swansea. And to finish things off for the championship matches on Sunday, we've got QPR going up against Peterborough. QPR in a little bit of a muddle at the moment with their goalkeeper situation. Not sure who's going to start there at the weekend. As of recording, they've not gone ahead and signed an emergency loan or anything like that, although that is currently being talked about after David Marshall went off injured in their game against Forest, which leaves QPR with a bit of a goalkeeping crisis at this point in time. In terms of that Forest game, decent enough start, but in the second half, things just got away from them a little bit when Forest upped the tempo. If you want to play one championship team without your first recognised goalkeeper, Peterborough's not a bad opponent to be playing, considering that they only average and um, just over seven shots per game away from home, which is considerably the lowest in the championship. Albeit they have had a little bit more of a goal threat about them, scoring five goals in their last three, but to lose the game in the fashion they did against Swansea after the second half comeback was really quite disappointing for Peterborough. So despite all the concerns that QPR will have with their goalkeeping department, I'm going to back them for a 2-1 victory. FIFA's going for a 1-1 draw. Well, those are all the championship matches which are going on over the weekend. Now let's go ahead and jump into the FA Cup action. So do let me know what you think is going to happen in these games as well for a bit of form. So coming up at the Riverside, we have Middlesbrough going up against Chelsea. Now already there's been quite a bit of controversy surrounding this game and um, before we even get into talking about the football because of Chelsea's current situation off the pitch and things like that it's all getting a little bit messy at the moment in terms of um, travel arrangements and what they can actually do in terms of selling tickets to fans and it was that bizarre request that they did and um, to have this game played behind closed doors which is just absolutely ludicrous um, all things considered and I don't think that anyone in the footballing world really took that request all too seriously I'd love to see Middlesbrough do it in this one they've already been fantastic against Premier League opposition especially now that they're at the Riverside a stadium where they've been so strong under Chris Wilder so far but Chelsea and how good they've been you know under Thomas Tuchel in cup competitions especially I think this may just be one step too far for Borough, although I would love to see both the championship clubs doing really well this weekend in the FA Cup. So in terms of how I see this one going, listen, it's dependent on how strong of a team Chelsea put out for this one. But I do think that Chelsea probably get the better of this one and win by two goals to one. FIFA's gone 2-0 Chelsea, but who knows, with a packed up Riverside in there, anything's possible. And then there's our last game to go ahead and predict for the weekend. We have Nottingham Forest coming up against Liverpool. This should be an absolute cracker of a match, you know, considering the calibre of teams that Forest have already gone up against so far in the FA Cup, especially at the City Ground. The feeling around the club at the moment, they're winning midweek over QPR, you know, that absolute thunderbolt that Jed Spence scored. But that win um, in midweek for Forest gave their playoff hopes a massive booster. 
but this is going to be a really tough game. Um, against the Liverpool side, who's still, you know, potentially on for the quadruple this season, after already getting their hands on some silverware, this one will be a really tough match. But Liverpool can't afford to take this one lightly, um, because Forest have been so successful under Steve Cooper so far, and I'm sure that Klopp will take that into consideration. I do think that Forest will get a goal in this one, but similar to Middlesbrough, this may just be one step too far. I'll go for an entertaining 3-2 Liverpool win. Why not? I think we could see a few goals scored in this one. FIFA's gone 2-1 Liverpool. I would love it if Forrest come through that game, but my head says that Liverpool and Chelsea probably get through these ties. But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. If you did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do get your thoughts in the comments down below in terms of what you think is going to happen in this weekend's action. We've got some quite interesting games coming up, both in the FA Cup and the Championship. So as always, if you did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular Championship content. Apart from that though, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.